Hi, I'm Alexa and welcome to my channel, Sandals and Steel Toes. In this video, we are gonna taste test 22 amazing tomato varieties. So my homestead is located in Northeast Ohio, Zone 6A, and this is our 2022 garden. So it's only fitting that for 2022, we are growing 22 different tomato varieties. Mmm, it's so good. This uh, video has been shot over the course of a couple different days tomato ripening season begins in mid-August and now we're at the beginning of September so I have to kind of film things as they ripen and come in. If you would have told my child self that I would be um, in my beautiful garden just nomming on a fresh tomato I'd be like you're crazy I would never do that. I hope you enjoy this year's tomato taste test series. Please leave comments on what your favorites are. Is there anything on this video that you have tried what do you think of it? Is there anything that you're like, you need to try this next year? I am open to all suggestions and would love to expand my tomato profile. And if you do enjoy this video, please press the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you can help me grow, that would be amazing. A lot of my videos seem to get buried in the algorithms of YouTube and I need your help to get that out there um, so other people can enjoy it too. So enjoy the taste test. This is the dark galaxy. And so let's just take a moment to appreciate the beautiful pattern on the outside of this fruit. This is probably what it's like to eat a galaxy. <laughs> Imagine all these little speckles are stars. So pretty. Let's cut it. This is more on the drier side for a tomato, so that's good to note. Not super juicy. Bite into some stars. Hmm. Now this has a very, very rich, very savory flavor. I wouldn't say it's fruity, um, but it tastes really good. Like it's just, I guess umami is probably the way to describe it. It's that umami taste and umami, Umami is like a really weird word. It's a really weird way to describe a flavor because it's not something that I think we use in our normal American vocabulary. Um, but uh, umami is just really the best way to describe how the dark galaxies taste. Maybe I can just kind of compare it to like a steak almost. I know that probably sounds crazy, but I mean, when you like bite into a piece of red meat just kind of has that that you get that like you can taste it like down in here underneath your tongue is kind of where that taste really comes to life and that's what i'm getting with this it's very rich mm, it's so good actually i think these might taste better than the ones that i have grown in previous years so i'm doing something right <laughs> over here this year but Wow, Dark Galaxy, not only is it just a beautiful tomato, but it also just tastes amazing. If you're looking for something very rich, packed full of flavor, the Dark Galaxy wins by looks and taste. Kellogg's breakfast. Now this one is overly ripe. I've been letting it sit on the shelf for a little bit too long, but it's still good on the bottom half to try. This is a big tomato. This one was the main fruit growing on this on this specific plant. There wasn't a lot of production on the plant. Everything was going into making this giant tomato, which I've almost ruined by letting it uh, rot a little bit, but such is life. And I've got lots of chicken friends here waiting for treats. Chicken! I will give them all the nasty stuff. Okay. The Kellogg's breakfast, everyone. It's definitely a tropical type of tomato. Reminds me of like a cantaloupe in a way. 
Um, it's not as sweet as the Dr. Y cheese, I will say that. But it's still very good. It's just really light and refreshing. I wasn't huge on the production of this plant. I'm a little disappointed on that. Um, I mean, it did make I me mean, a beautiful big tomato, but if I'm only going to get one tomato, I'm probably better off planting something else that gives me a little bit more. And the flavor is good, but if I had to pick this or Dr. Wyshe's, I'm going to pick Dr. Wyshe's. But my chickens love it. Mortgage lifter. When selecting this tomato for the taste test, I didn't go with the biggest one that I had. I actually wanted to get one that was a little bit more smaller because I felt that the flavors would be more concentrated. Sometimes you get those really big tomatoes and they're just full of water. They're very impressive, but the taste can be diluted. So the mortgage lifters actually have been smaller than uh, the other red tomatoes that I'm growing, which are the triple crop and the German pink. Both of those have been bigger than the mortgage lifters. So let's see how it is on taste. I know chickens. Kind of peppery. Yeah, peppery is the very first thing that comes to mind taking a bite into this mortgage lifter. It does have a very classic tomato taste, savory. I would not put this into the fruity category, but savory and peppery is the mortgage lifter. German pink. My German pinks have been huge this year. While this one is not the largest, it is still very big. The German pink is definitely a brighter flavor compared to the mortgage lifter. It has more sweetness, more of a flavorful aroma. I could see in this paired um, actually like in a fruit salad almost. Now I could see if this was, the taste could be uh, slightly watered down. Try and get a more meatier section here. Very good taste. If I was just eating fresh, I would prefer this to the mortgage lifter actually. I think it's got just a more, it's got more sweetness to it. It's overall kind of fruity, but I did like the mortgage lifter for that really deep savory taste as well. The German pink. Trip L crop. Now the triple crop have been so productive. I'm growing these in my greenhouse and I have never had such beautiful tomatoes. I mean, most of them are perfectly round, mostly blemish free. They have just been excellent this year. And this was actually the very first variety to produce a ripe tomato in my greenhouse. Probably about a week earlier than everything else. Now the triple crop did make it on my top five list last year. So let's see if it's still up there. It is. I mean, it's just so fruity and there's just so much flavor that's packed right in that first bite. I would say it even has maybe a little bit of a tartness to it, but it blends really nicely with the sweet undertone. I don't know. The more tomatoes I try, if I could only grow one big red tomato, I think it's going to be the triple crop. Although I know there's thousands of tomato, tomato varieties out there and I haven't tried nearly close to all of them. So maybe there's something else, but until I find something better, I think this one keeps uh, number one on my choice of big reds. Green Giant. So I'm a little skeptical of green tomatoes. I've had them before. I don't really just love the flavor all too much. And it's kind of hard to tell when they're really ripe. So when I pick this, 
Uh, it was just starting to get soft, but I was having some splitting here. So I wanted to pick it before it got, you know, more rained on and, and all that and didn't want it to rot out. And then as I let it sit on my shelf, um, it did begin to turn kind of just got this red, really just kind of like red blushing mixed in here. And as I squish it, it does feel soft. It feels to me like a ripe tomato. Um, it does have this red in here, so I'm hoping this is fully ripe. I know that green tomatoes, like green variety tomatoes, they don't actually turn red, like they're not supposed to, but some redness is an indication of it being ripe. So we'll try the green giant. It is pretty. It's not bad. Do I love this? No. <laughs> There's nothing here that makes me think that this is excellent and I want to have this again. Chunk of it down towards the middle. Down deeper. Deeper into the meat. Kind of looks like a watermelon. It's more earthy. You know, maybe you would want to pair this in with um, some root vegetables and like kind of a stew. Might be good in something like that. I would put this into the peppery category too. There's nothing here that just like is wow for me. It's not bad. If I had it on a meal, I would eat it. But I just can't see myself growing green tomatoes for enjoyment. <laughs> And I'm sorry to all those who like them, but I don't know, they just don't do it for me. Black Beauty. So the Black Beauties have been producing amazing this year. I did not have good luck with them last year, so I was really excited to grow these again. And I have better soil where I'm growing them. And so the Black Beauties have been doing so good. I have been enjoying them very much. You know, if you uh, are looking for a meat substitution, I don't know, this kind of looks like a nice, uh, a nice chunk of red meat almost. I don't know. Can, I, can can a tomato compare to a nice steak? Someone may think so. Mmm. There was ever something that was like all in one. This may be it. It's savory. It's got kind of that peppery. Maybe peppery and savory is the same thing. Umami. It has some fruity undertones. It's still slightly sweet. I mean, I know why people rave over Black Beauty because they're just so dang good. No, it is pretty juicy, um, but I actually like that. I think it adds a lot of complexity to the tomato and to the bite. This is something that, again, if I only had to pick like very few tomatoes to grow, this would definitely be one of them. Now, it did take longer to ripen compared to all of the other ones. Um, the dark purple ones are definitely the long, they take longer, but I think it's worth the wait. And even in some bites, I kind of get this hint of like grapeness, like, like almost like a wine kind of flavor. I wish I had more adjectives <laughs> to describe the way that these tomatoes taste, but really I think Black Beauty is a great all-in-one tomato. Jersey Devil. Now I grow the Jersey Devils to be used as a paste tomato. So in place of something like Aroma, I grow Jer Jersey Devils. And I've been growing them for a few years and mostly because I really like the shape of them. Um, I've been happy with the flavor in the past. I have noticed that this year they have been getting more blossom end rot compared to anything else that I'm growing. So I don't know if that's something to do with the variety or the conditions. These are growing um, in my greenhouse. Right? I think I picked, oh crap. Look at how beautiful that is. You can see there's juice in there. They're a little juicy, but mostly full of meat. These are nice and sweet. 
Um, if you would like a sweeter tomato sauce, I would go with these because there's a lot of really good natural sugars already in this, so you don't need to add sugar like this has it for you. So in that bite, I thought of fruit punch for some reason. Yeah, the sweetness and I guess the red flavor and all of it, it just, it brought fruit punch to mind. So if you're looking for a tomato that kind of reminds you of like a fruit punch, you might like this. But definitely recommend the Jersey Devil. Um, this is the first one I've actually had this year and just taking a bite into it brings me back to why I grow these. A lot of flavor, really good. Grow it. Big Mama. So this is the first year that I'm growing the Big Mama. It was recommended to me by my mother-in-law, Gail. you would heard about them, that they they produce really, really big and really sweet tomatoes that um, basically would replace aroma tomatoes. So again, we're, we're growing these for sauce production. This one is actually one of the smaller ones that I picked. Um, a lot of them are still out ripening on the vine, but I did have a couple early ones produce and ripen in my greenhouse. And so this is one of them that came from the greenhouse. And I'm excited to try it. Um, this will be my first time trying the Big Mama. The outer part was a little crunchy. So like, I'm wondering if it's not fully ripe, but it looks very ripe. Let's try and get the middle. So the middle section is definitely a lot more sweeter than the outer part. So for a saucy tomato, there is a lot of juice in this. And this one specifically grown in my greenhouse is not getting a lot of water, just whatever it can set up from the ground. So this is savory. It's got a savory sweetness to it. I can see how this is also good um, to be used in sauce making. Mm. It's mushy. So far, there isn't anything outstanding about this, in my opinion. It does have a sweetness, it has got some savory, savoriness to it, but you know sometimes you just bite into and you're like, wow, that's so good. I'm not getting it with this. The outer skin part of it is kind of like throwing me off too with like how crunchy it is and the outer part has like no flavor. That part's pretty bland. I'm not quite sure how I feel about this one yet. It's definitely not bad, but it's not the most impressive uh, paste tomato that I've had. So with this one, I'm not gonna completely count it out. Um, I think maybe I need to try some more. Maybe maybe this one just isn't fully ripe yet. So I'm gonna wait and see if I can get anything else that tastes a little bit more exciting. But that's the Big Mama. Very Crazy Cherry. So it's a little sour, but that's kind of to be expected. So I just picked these and we have had rain for two days. And so anytime you have a lot of rain, your fruits are gonna be a little bit more watered down and the sugars in the fruit are not gonna be as defined because the water kind of dilutes them and sometimes they can even be a little sour, like this is a little sour, but it's still really delicious. Um, it's very sweet. The berries, crazy cherries, remind me kind of like a white grape. It's not so much like your regular cherry, red cherry tomato, um, they're a lot lighter, more fruity, and I think they're just a really fun variety to grow because if you look at the plant, they get these huge clusters of cherry tomatoes. And so this is a really great one to do with kids. Um, I think more kids like this kind than some of the red ones too. The Berry Crazy Cherry. Black Strawberry Cherry. So this is a new variety from Baker Creek this year, and look how much bigger these are compared to the berries. I mean, if you're looking for a cherry tomato, this is probably bigger than your normal cherry sized tomato. This is a really nice size, and this is actually a very similar size to the pink bumblebee cherry tomato as well. It's hard for them to be called cherry tomatoes when they're bigger than cherry. But I love the way these look. They have really pretty coloring. So they're kind of that really dark purple on top and then all of this like pinkish red streaking throughout and some sections even kind of have like a yellow streak and it's lighter at the bottom.
I would definitely put this more on the savory end. It's not so much sweet like a lot of cherry tomatoes are. So I was kind of just reminded of apple cider vinegar, actually. I had like a little tingle on my tongue. And maybe it's more like an aftertaste. But at first it's just, it's very savory. And then it kind of just had, like it's just a hint of apple cider vinegar. Obviously it's not totally like that because that would be crazy, but I don't know. This is kind of what it reminded me of. Very real good. Definitely a savory tomato. It's got that umami. And yeah, there's just something strange about it. Like, I, I don't know, apple cider vinegar is all I can think of. But it's good. Um, I would have this on, you know, if I needed to cut up some cherry sized tomatoes for salads, this would be great for that. And they're really pretty. Black Sea Man. So I'll admit that I have had several of the Black Sea Man already, and this one is pretty high on the list. Um, this one is a new variety this year, and it's it's different. Like, let's talk about the coloring first. So the bottom half, when it's ripe, it gets a darker red, but the tops still stay kind of green. And I could probably let this sit for a few more days and this will kind of redden out a little bit more. Um, but overall, this is pretty much what the color looks like. And they have been producing pretty well. I've gotten many of these off the vine so far. I've got quite a bit left out there. I just picked this one. And I've just been really happy with the flavor. Look how pretty that is inside. Now hopefully after all this rain we've had, uh, this still tastes as good as I hope it will. It does. It still tastes just as good. So I really like to try and make analogies to things to really convey how something tastes because sometimes it's very hard to describe a taste. This one's a little bit hard to describe a taste. So we'll go with, again, umami. I think I just really like that of a tomato. But it kind of reminds me of like a blackberry or a raspberry. You know how it just kind of has that deep, sweet tartness to it? There's like a tanginess as an aftertaste. So it's like starts off really sweet, umami, savory. It's got a lot of stuff happening all at one time. But then behind all that, it's kind of like this tangy, but it's really a nice blend of all of those taste flavor profiles all at the same time. I have really enjoyed this tomato and I just love the color. I would say this is a very like universal tomato. You can use it in all kinds of ways. You can use it for fresh eating, sandwiches, salads, you could cook it down uh, into a meal for sauce or like a bruschetta. Really, I, I just feel like this is a very versatile tomato that can be used in so many ways because of the really rich flavor. Like the complexity of this is just insane and it's really hard for me to convey it, but I'd have to say this is something that is on, probably going on my favorites list and I will grow this again. Black Sea Man. So I hope that you have enjoyed this taste test review video. Please make sure to like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel, and come back for more videos. I have tons of tomato-related content on my tomato playlist, so go and check that out. Watch it on replay, and please share with your friends. Your support means the world to me, and I would love to hear from you on what are your suggestions for other tomatoes that I should try next year. Do something you love today, and have a good one. What is this rooster crowing about? Ooh, there's a roly poly in it. Ugh. Get out of my tomato.